Well, you can take your Bibles tonight, and you can go to Psalm chapter 47. Tonight we're going to look at the godly design of music. The godly design of music. And music can have a, a very powerful influence on people's lives. And most people are primarily concerned with the entertainment or the enjoyment that music provides. And yet God's word clearly demonstrates and shows that it is a godly design and that there is a purpose of music for his people. And we're going to look tonight at um, five major purposes of music. And the first one that we're going to look at is worship and praise. And the Hebrew title for the book of Psalms is, and I'm probably going to ruin this, sorry, Hebrew people, but Sefer Tehillim, which means a book of songs in praise to God. That's what it means. And all of the Psalms either address God directly or make reference to God. And one example that we have here is in Psalm 47, verse 1, it says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob whom he loved. Selah. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigns over the heathen. God sits upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. And David was a man after God's own heart, says in the word of God. And he was also a great composer and lover of music. And he used music to worship and to pray God in 73 psalms. 73 of the psalms are attributed to David. And King David appointed a man named Asaph as the minister over the service of song. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. First Chronicles 16, verse 37. Chronicles. Sorry, did I say something else? Corinthians. Corinthians. Sorry, First Chronicles. I misread my own note there. First Chronicles 16. Verse 37. It says, So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, Asaph, and his brethren, to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obedium, with their brethren, threescore and eight, Obedium, also the son of Jaduthun, and Hosa, to be porters, and Zadok, the priest, and his brethren, the priests before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them, he man, that's right, he man, and Jaduthan, and the rest that were chosen, 
who were expressed by name to give thanks to the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. And with them, Heman and Jeduthun, with trumpets and cymbals for those that should make a sound and with musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jeduthun were porters. And all the people departed every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. And so David had appointed Asaph as a minister over this, and many of the psalm titles refer to Asaph, Heman, and Ethan, which is the uh, alternate name for Jeduthun. So these guys, Heman, Jeduthun, and uh, Asaph, were set there to minister unto people with music, to have to oversee the music that was going on in the services. Go to First Chronicles 23. They composed music for worship at the temple. Okay, it was something that God wanted for His people. First Chronicles 23, verse 1. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. Okay? So it's the end of David's life here. He's passing his reign on to Solomon. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and upward. And their number by their poles, man by man, was Thirty and eight thousand, of which twenty and four thousand were set forward, were to set forward the work of the house of the Lord, and six thousand were officers and judges. Moreover, four thousand were porters, and four thousand praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. So out of thirty eight thousand, of these Levites, 4,000 of them, a little over 10%, were set aside to praise God with instruments. So at the end of his life, as he's, pray, as he's um, passing his reign over to Solomon, he appoints over 10% of the Levites to praise God as musicians, so that music would be a part of that service. Go to chapter 25, verse 1. <clears throat> And it, the purpose of it was to praise God, to worship God in those, in those services, so that there would be music to praise God. Chapter 25, verse 1. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the number of the workmen according to their service was, and then it goes through here, verse 5. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer in the words of God, to lift up the horn. And God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. And all, all these, verse 6, were under the hands of their father for song in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, psalteries, and harps, for the service of the house of God, according to the king's order to Asaph, Jaduthan, and Heman. So the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the Lord, even all that were cunning, was two hundred fourscore and eight. And so this chapter outlines the organization of these musicians and how they were set up to be part of the temple service, the house of the Lord. So Solomon builds this temple in his days to come. And there are musicians there to, to provide music as a part of the worship and the praise to God. Go to Exodus, or sorry, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 5. The second thing or major purpose that music is good for is for thanksgiving. For the giving of thanks. 2 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1. It says, thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. So the temple is done. 
And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father hath dedicated, and the silver, and the gold, and all the what? Instruments. Instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Silver, gold, and what? Instruments. That's kind of a neat thing to think about, right? That among the treasures is silver and gold and instruments, things to, pr to play music with. Verse 11, And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course, and also the Levites which were and also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, and Jaduthan, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests, sounding with trumpets. And it, or it came to pass, it came even to pass, that the trumpeteers and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. So this was the dedication of the temple. And music played an enormous role in it and brought about the great glory of God. Like everyone got to sort of experience and feel that presence of God in that moment. That it filled the house with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. That God's glory was there because they were singing in praise and thanksgiving to God for all that he had done. And that was the dedication of the temple and thanking God for all that he had provided they had music. Go to Exodus chapter 14. So music was seen as a vehicle to, to help God's people in worship and praise to him and to be thankful to God for what he had done. In Exodus 14, chapter, or verse 28, it says, And the waters returned, this is at the parting of the Red Sea, And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And it, Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God, and I will exhort him, or exalt him. So this is the first recorded song in the Bible. This is the first time a song is mentioned in the Bible. And it comes at a time of great deliverance for the children of Israel. A song of thanksgiving for what God had done for them. How he, the horse and the rider were thrown into the sea. And that he was their strength and salvation. That he was the one who had saved them. And so it came at a time where they were greatly thankful for what God had done for them. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms 
and hymns and spiritual song, <clears throat> singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So throughout the Bible, God instructs his people to sing songs of thanks, to sing songs of thanks. And that the songs we should sing are ones that are spiritual songs, ones that help us to connect with God, ones that help us to remind us of the things that God has done, and we can be thankful for those things. Uh, go to Colossians chapter 3. Another great purpose for music and the Word of God is to teach and admonish. And we see that in Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So one of the purposes of music is that it can teach and admonish one another. Music can help change people's hearts and reestablish fellowship with God. If the music is godly, if the lyrics have to do with God's word, it can help bless people and change their hearts and get them back into fellowship. It can teach them about God. So one of the things it is good for is to teach and to admonish. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 10. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. It says, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head. This is speaking of Saul. And kissed him and said, Is not is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at uh, Zelza. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for you, my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet their three men going up to God, to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to that city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Another um, purpose for music, another godly purpose, is for comfort and for inspiration. For comfort or inspiration. And music helped to comfort and inspire Saul here to receive the Spirit of God. Verse 6 says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And part of that were these company of prophets coming down with instruments to play and music to play to comfort Saul's heart and to ready him and to inspire him. Go to 2 Kings chapter 3. Second Kings 3 verse 11.
But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants said, Here is Elisha the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. He was in a bad mood, right? He was in a bad mood. He didn't really want to involve himself with these guys. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. You're a bum, and if it wasn't for the guy next to you, I wouldn't even be talking to you. So he says, roughly translated. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. And he goes on to tell them what to do. But Elisha was troubled. He was not in really a good place and a good spot to, to minister unto these guys and to take care of them and to do what he needed to do. And music helped him get quiet with God and helped him get right. He ordered a minstrel to be brought to him so he could settle down, so that he could relax, so that he could be comforted and inspired. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. So music is of a godly design, and it can be very profitable to our lives. And like anything in this world, the adversary can has twisted and sort of messed with a godly thing. And there's lots of music out there that doesn't do these things and isn't profitable. You know, if it's music that makes you angry or music that makes you depressed or sad, that's not profitable. That's not a comfort or an inspiration. But music can be a really great thing too. 1 Samuel 16, verse 22. And we should always remember with anything that we should be doing things according to God's word. 1 Samuel 16, 22. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was what? Refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Okay. And so when Saul, possessed by a devil, or is being troubled by a devil spirit, David came and played music for him, and he was refreshed and comforted, and the evil spirit departed from him. So music can be a comfort. It can take care of you. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 31. And finally, the fifth major purpose that we're going to look at is for the retention of Scripture. For the retention of Scripture. And Deuteronomy 31, verse 16. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. So he's basically telling Moses, you're going to die soon, and the children of Israel are going to screw up. Verse 17, Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, 
and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves in wax and fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them, and provoke me and break my covenant. And shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their what? Seed. Out of the mouths of of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And so God knew that the people that were there and among them right now the adults were going to go into this land and fill themselves up and then turn away from God. And so he instructed Moses to teach this song to the, to the children of Israel and so that it would be in the mouths of their seed, their children, and that they wouldn't forget about God, that they would remember this song and the great things that God had done for them and have a remembrance of God. And so it is profitable for the retention of Scripture. I mean, when you listen to a lot of the music that we listen to a lot of the believers have made it has scripture in it it has verses in it it has the word of god in it and it helps us to remember the words that are in the bible and so it is profitable for us or for us to retain scripture through music and so the des godly design of music is illustrated throughout the bible that it's profitable for worship and praise, for thanksgiving, for comfort and for inspiration, for teaching and admonishing, and for the retention of Scripture. God designed it for us to enjoy it and for it to be profitable.